It appears that navigating the pandemic in January is going to be a rough ride as the rapidly spreading Omicron variant is driving COVID numbers past previous records. Joining us now to talk more about this is Medical Director of the Vancouver Infectious Diseases Centre, Dr. Brian Conway. Good morning and Happy New Year. Thank you for joining us. Happy New Year to you, Carrie. So we did have you on right before the holidays, and you did predict this type of growth in case counts. With the data now emerging, Doctor, uh, what do we know about how Omicron is impacting BC? Well, I think it's impacting us in a significant way. The actual case counts that are being reported, uh, the real count is two to three times higher. So that number is not helpful to us going forward in understanding how many British Columbians are living with uh, Omicron infection, it's much higher, and we just need to find a way of getting through the next few weeks in this context. Okay, so one of the measures uh, taken uh, starting today that's back to school is being stalled for a week. So based on Omicron infections, will in-person learning be pushed back further or moved online, and should it? Oh, it should not, it, and, and I really hope it doesn't get pushed back. We know that leaving our children, our teenagers home affects their physical health, their mental health, the health of societies. And right now, the school might actually be safer than the environment, the general environment, where there is so much Omicron. At least in school, we're controlling who's going in, we're controlling who's going out. And in the next week, hopefully, safety measures will be put in place to make schools even safer. Yeah, let's talk about the booster shots. Uh, the province has expedited boosters for many groups. Teachers say they should have those shots uh, in place sooner than later before school gets back in. What do you think? Well, sooner, perhaps maybe not before school goes back in. But I think we need to understand that uh, in the neighborhood of 4 million booster shots will need to be administered at some point. And there's still 1 million British Columbians that are unvaccinated or incompletely vaccinated. So this is really our main challenge is to get millions of doses of vaccines into arms as quickly as we can to make the environment even safer, beginning with schools. Yeah, and the province pleading with people who have left their invites unanswered to get those booster doses. Uh, there is a five-day isolation for those with COVID who are vaccinated now. Some physicians are calling for a three-week circuit breaker. Do you think the current measures go far enough? Well, I think the current measures just need to be applied. The main problem we would have with stricter measures is would people follow them or try to find ways around them? I think that if the measures in place are very well applied and we get access to rapid tests to better police some of the social gatherings that are occurring, find out people who are asymptomatic, minimally symptomatic and are already infected. I think those things together should help us. Of course, if hospital bed capacity, ICU bed capacity is threatened, that's what really triggers circuit breakers. We're not there yet in BC. For people who have to go to work, what are the kinds of things that they can do to be as safe as possible? Well, don't go to work if you're sick. Make sure that you're optimally vaccinated. So if you're on the list to get your third shot, if you're one of those lucky ones, get it as soon as you can. In the workplace, really stick to people you know, have a mask on hand at all times, uh, wear it uh, more than probably you did uh, last month and practice reasonable personal distancing. I think that's what I would do. We're hearing more and more, doctor, about those who are testing positive. They're actually showing symptoms and then test negative for days before testing positive. Are variants becoming harder to detect? Probably not. It may be that these are minimally symptomatic individuals with lower viral loads that the tests aren't picking up. And I think the suggestion that if you have any symptoms at all, that you try and, and stay away from others for a little bit until the symptoms resolve is probably, this is probably sound advice going forward. Well, with Omicron ramping up, obviously people's dreams of COVID just going away in 22 doesn't seem like it's likely to happen anytime soon. We are in this new year, uh, approaching two years since the start of this whole pandemic. People are looking to the end. Is there an end? And maybe tell us what an endemic looks like. Well, an endemic is where we understand where viral transmission is occurring. It is relatively limited in scope and we have measures at our disposal to reduce that level of virus, viral transmission and illness. We're not there right now, obviously, with the, 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 the exponential spread of Omicron, but I think that's what we will evolve to at some point going forward. And I think we should all be ready to get our next 
shot, which would probably be our fourth by my count in the fall, along with our flu shot. That'll be part of endemic COVID. Well, that's something that we can look forward to then, I guess. Dr. Brian Conway, thank you for joining us this morning and answering all of our questions. Thanks for having me. Have a great day.